I have a great show for you guys tonight. Tonight we're talking about the ultimate flex as a man. Let me tell you, the ultimate flex as a man, it's not about the watches, it's not about the cars, it's not about the house, it's not about the estate, it's not about any of that shit. That stuff is later. The ultimate flex for a man, and this can apply to most men, it doesn't, you don't even need to be this super high achieving, super wealthy person to be a, a man of value. No, 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 no. The ultimate flex as a man is the ability to take your woman out of the workforce. If she, if you can make, if you as a man can provide enough for enough, make enough money for yourself, such that you can provide not only for yourself, but the people around you, and you can take your woman out of the work to live job that she's in, that, my friends, is the ultimate flex. That's it. Anything else is just nice to have after that. All you need, all you need to do as a man, first and foremost, is get yourself right financially. Understand that you must bear responsibility for others, which mostly includes your woman and your family. That's it. That's the start. You need to just get that through your thick head. Get it through your head that men must provide, okay? Then, once you've acknowledged that, take steps in your life such that you are moving towards making enough money so that you can take your woman out of the workforce. And being able to do that is a flex as a man. It's a flex to other men. It's definitely a flex to your woman. It's a flex to her family. Could you imagine? She just picks up the phone and says, Mom, I don't have to work anymore. He, says, he said I can quit my job. He's gonna take care of me. Could you imagine that phone call? They would love that. Hang on, my, my thing's gonna die. Let me, one second. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. Let me get my phone charger, one second. Hang on. Let's see if this does it. Okay, oh, I got it ready. No, that's the micro. Oh, everything's hard all the time. Okay, let's see. Hello, I'm back, sorry about that. Okay, let's see if I can plug this in, like so. Don't mind me, he's all up in the face right now. Okay. All right, all right, let's see if this works. Sorry. Give you a second, technical difficulties. All right. That worked. Okay, where was I? <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties. But I can afford an extra charger. <laughs> That's a flex too. I got all kinds, folks. Don't even worry about it. I got another one for you. If you come over, I got one for you. Don't even worry. We can both charge our phones. That's how I got it. <laughs> all right. Anyways, what was I saying? The ultimate flex as a man is to be able to take your woman out of the workforce. She's going to call her mama up. Mama, we, we did it, mama. <laughs> That's how it would be for real. We did it. She's, mama's going to go, <laughs> like that. That's great. Don't you want that as a man? You should aspire to that. I don't understand why people are fussing about it. Oh, she just wants my money. Yeah, kind of. So? So what? She just wants your money. She's going to have to do more to work for that, some of that money. So what? Win-win, so, it sounds like. What do you mean? <laughs> you get what you want. She gets what she wants. Yeah, it's, that sounds like a fairy tale. You did it. Who cares what she wants? As long as she's around you, as long as you're providing. So y'all both win. What's the, what's the, what's the beef? <laughs> are you drunk? No. No, I'm sober. I, this, these are sobering thoughts, in fact. The way I see it is that men should want to provide for their woman. A man should want to take his woman out of the workforce. It's kind of emasculating 
to have to think that the only way we're going to pay these bills and keep these lights on is if she's having to go and do half the damn work or more than half for some of y'all. For some of y'all. That's an emasculating feeling. The only way you can pay for your house or your apartment is that if she goes and works for it, that's doesn't, that doesn't, I would make me feel guilty. I would feel like such an asshole. I would be like, what can I do to get on stat? Because it's embarrassing to have to rely on any woman to pay my bills. That's crazy. And I just, it just is not a thought. That's just not a thought I have. And so, and for men to be like, yeah, 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 my wife works. She's a good thing too, because I wouldn't be able to afford her. I couldn't live here without for her. Like, I couldn't even fucking imagine that mindset. It just feels lazy. It feels like you're not aspiring for more than that. And I'm not saying that women can't have careers. Look, I was raised by a single mother. She, she had a meaningful career to her. It meant more than just the money. And for cases like that, fine. I, I respect that. I appreciate that. Okay? If, you, if that's something that's meaningful for you, something that really impacts your life in a positive way, something that you couldn't imagine not doing and that was your job, fine. Okay. However, most people are just working to live. And if they're just simply working to live, I couldn't imagine as a man dating or going out to date before you know for sure you have enough money to pay for not only yourself, but also for the people that you would in the future, in the near future and further future support on your own. Because otherwise, I would feel inadequate. I would feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not making enough. I, let me get my priorities in order before I start going out on dates. Because I'm a little, I'm putting the cart before the horse a bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. And when women go, I want a man that makes money. Yeah, no shit. They all do. Don't they all? And as a, as a young child, for me, I was always like, yeah, dating means you need to have money. Raisinets are expensive. Every time you take a girl out to the movies, that she wants popcorn and raisinettes. And that shit was expensive when I was a kid. It's still expensive because of inflation. God. Just saying, you gotta have enough. And if you can't, if you can't afford it, then just don't yet. Just don't yet. Don't date yet. Don't waste people's times yet. Don't lead them on yet. Don't pretend you're richer than you are yet. Don't do any of that shit. Just get your money right first, then date. Deal? That's a good deal. That's better. It's better for your own peace of mind as a man. It's your own masculinity as a man. <laughs> oh, man. I need a company Christmas party date. Listen, you know how, people, how many people ask me to go to their company Christmas party? Show me off. I'm not doing that. Unless you pay me a lot. Then I'll go. Maybe even happy ending at the end. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not showing off to your for your ex-boyfriend that you still work with to see me with you. Ugh. God. Trying to use me to make people jealous. <laughs> <laughs> good, music, good food and music. I got that at home, sis. In the ceilings. I got music in the ceilings. And I got great food already laid out by the chef on the table. Don't worry about me. I want to go to your damn Christmas party. Oh, <laughs> uh, Hello, everybody. I just, I just don't get the beef. I think that I think that it's a, a given that women are gold diggers to a degree. I don't think that women should. I also here's another thing. I don't think that women should like say, "Oh no, not me. I'm not a gold digger." Just fucking own it. Here's the deal: if women just started owning it, started just saying, "Yeah, I am a gold digger. I only want guys that are successful," and then they started saying that, and then also simultaneously, this is the big one. This is the hard one. Stop sleeping with dudes that are fucking broke losers. 
You would think that that would be the first thing that women did. No, nope, y'all still sleeping with the bums. I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, you met him at a bar and he was tall and he had a neck tattoo and now you got two fucking kids. Whoa. Why? Why though? What, what for? A lifetime of fucking baby daddy issues? What the fuck was that about? So if women would do those two things, all right, say just straight up, I'm the gold digger, straight up, yes. And then also stop dating guys that don't have gold to dig. There's none back there, there's none in the backyard, the front yard, nowhere. There's no gold to dig at all. So say you're a gold digger straight up and then also stop dating guys that don't can't show you the gold, dead ass. If you just owned it and lived that way, it would force men it would force men to put their priorities in order because they knew they wouldn't be able to get women. They, that's the answer. They wouldn't be able to. Fuck, women are gold diggers. Fuck, I need some gold. That's what they would do. Women men would figure that shit out. We built the whole goddamn world. I promise you, they'll figure it out. But instead, y'all sleeping with him because, I don't know, you were, uh, you, you were out one night and uh, he was cute and he had those short sleeves rolled up or whatever the fuck. And now y'all got kids with him. And then they're mad that he was a bum. He was a bum when you met him. He's a bum now. And you're now mad that you slept with him and had babies. That's crazy. So I'm just giving you the answers, folks. Just, just own it. Yes, I'm a gold digger. Yes. And then also, no, not sleep with you unless you got gold to dig. That's it. And if, and if, you, if you live by those two things, it would force men to elevate their game. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, I am getting a little red. I was on a boat sailing yesterday. My all my cheeks here, like this, just hella red right now. I didn't apply enough sunscreen to my face, and I'm living with that choice today. Thank you for calling me out. Um, stop selling for those ladies. I just like nice things. Yeah, and here's the other thing. I'm not you guys. You guys kind of sometimes people misunderstand me. And I say, like, okay, yes, be a gold digger. Only date guys that have gold to dig. Fine. Um, but that doesn't mean that every man is going to be rich. Because here's the thing. That's just not possible, right? Not every man needs to be rich, okay? And some of y'all have nice taste. Some of y'all have a big expensive taste for who you are as a person. You're born that way. I get it. I was born that way, too. Um, I need a rich life. I can't, I can't not live. In, I, I don't thrive very well. I wither like a... Like a a plant in a, in a poor environment. Like, I just can't do it. All right, I need rich personally. But not everybody's like that. Not everybody feels that way. Um, but what I am saying is that you need to have, you need, what I'm simply saying here is that you need, as a woman, all right, you need to date men that are responsible fiscally, all right? Not everybody's gonna be multi multimillionaire. That's not realistic, all right? But for some of y'all living out in fucking Wichita, 200 grand a year is like a good living for a great sized family. You get what I'm saying? With your, with your, with your house that costs less than 300K and, and you got four bedrooms, like go! You know, know your area, know your demos, all right? Y'all don't need to date multimillionaires necessarily, but you definitely gotta date a guy that's got gold somewhere, all right? And then just go digging for it, sis. That's it. That's the answer for all women. And then here's the other answer for men is just stop dating women or stop being mad at women for wanting more from men, which is simply put, here's the thing. Women, men get mad at women because they're like, oh, that's all they want. That's all that women want is money for me. That's bullshit. She doesn't really love me. She just wants my money. Okay. And I hear that to a degree, but let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. Even if you date a woman when you're broke, you start out broke, you date a woman when you're broke, and then your money comes up. That's happened, that's happened to me. And your money comes up, then it does kind of become about money. It, it, no matter what, it's going down that road eventually. It might not now today, but let me tell you, sir, pampers ain't cheap, all right? Once you start having a baby, Fucking baby powder is expensive because of P. Diddy. Now baby oil's just skyrocketing. And then just lit the private school's expensive. A wet nurse is expensive. It's all expensive. And it very quickly, 
becomes a lot less about your neck tattoo and far more about how we're gonna fucking pay for this baby for the rest of our fucking lives. Okay, that's the whole, it, it just, it does could become about money. All right? Y'all, at first, okay, there's a lot of chemicals in the bloodstream, y'all having some, there's, there's a lot of love and there's all this stuff, but now the baby happens and it's like, well, now we're just together out of the spirit of the team of getting, making sure this human we raise isn't gonna grow up to be the worst, make sure they're eating and stuff and I don't look like a bad mom from all the other parents in the PTA. And then that's it, all right? So it does become about money. When it settles down, y'all st start having sex only once a month, if you're lucky. <laughs> it does become about money, all right? So, whether she was with you when she was a broker or not, I promise you, in the end, it's all about money. So as a man, just stop being mad at that. Who cares? It's gonna cost. Life costs. It's a never, and here's the life. It's a constant, ongoing maintenance. Everything needs to be maintained. Everything is always fucking breaking. Everything is always not right and needs to be done right. And everything, just con it's just a constant, small repair everywhere. And if we want to just boil it down to just one variable, it's just how much is it going to cost? And that's it. That's your, that includes your wife, your kids, and everything around those, those people and yourself. It's just a cost and it is about money. So the answer is get yourself right financially first, then date and show, demonstrate that you can provide not only for yourself, but for others, all right? And then that will build the attraction. Y'all start coming together for Bible study, whatever, the birds do it, the bees do it, fine. Then new life comes and then it's just like, I need more money than this little fucking baby can eat, all right? And as long as, you're, as, long as you kind of stay above that, uh, the positive side of that equation, you'll be relatively all right, all right? And it's nothing more as a flex then, you know what's embarrassing? You having a child and then like, I don't know, five weeks later, she's gotta go back to work. She's gotta like push it all back in and wear her fucking Spanx and then just carry that shit back to work while it's all sort of getting back to kind of where it was. That's embarrassing as a man, all right? You gotta just, <laughs> at least got her skin tightened first, god damn. I mean, so the answer is this, guys. If, you're, if your woman has to go back to work, has to work to pray, pray for a kid, then it's not, you're just not doing enough. You need to work harder. That's it. And don't be mad at women because that, that that's the case. And then everybody will live better. Okay? <laughs> okay, hold on. Kalan says, ladies, money isn't enough. He now needs intelligence, emotional maturity, ability to lead well, and have a high emotional EQ, uh, IQ, I think you mean EQ, okay, fine, to run a successful family and marriage. Okay, here's the thing, here's the thing, Walters, based on your you know, advice, whatever. If a man can make something of himself and make money in this world, he, that's what comes with it. Do you think women just like money for money's sake? That's not what I'm saying. That's ridiculous. The thing is, the thing about successful men is they, the characteristics they have to develop to become a success. Okay? What do you think that means? Do you think that he just, I just, I just dumb as fuck walked into the building and money just came down on me. No, you know how hard it is to make money? You need to have, listing your attributes, um, intelligence, emotional maturity, abil ability to lead well, and emotional EQ because you're going to have to deal with people the whole time. You know what it's like to make money? It's, it's a never ending fucking battle. You gotta lead people here. You gotta manage finances here. You gotta deal with enemies on all fucking sides. You gotta deal with problems every day from the company, from people within the company, from the tax man, from all of it. It never ends ever. And in, in order for you to be a success in life at all, you have to have high level of intelligence, high, work, high level of conscientiousness, high IQ and emotional intelligence, and you gotta be able to lead all those people into the fucking abyss if that's what it takes to be successful. So by default, you're gonna have all those characteristics. So this is exactly why I don't do lives with anybody because I don't need to listen to your not so well thought out opinions. I just like my one directional talk, you see, because if a man is successful, he has all those characteristics by default. 
All right? So we can just skip all what you just said and just listen to what I'm saying. Okay? <laughs> Hello, guys. I went live with Shira. Yes! Shira's a good friend of mine. Dear friend of mine. I like Shira a lot. How do, I, how do I have him start paying bills when I live with my parents? You gotta tell him, say, look, you know, where is this gonna go? Am I gonna be, am I gonna be, if I'm dating you, does that mean I'm gonna have to keep living with my parents on and on, or what's that, what's that mean? <laughs> Playing this right next to someone who needs to hear it. <laughs> oh, as a parting gift, that's fucking hilarious. Found out about your profile through Sherry. Yeah, Sherry and I did a live um, recently. It's on my um, YouTube. I just posted it. That was a fun one, too. Do rich guys have a type? Yes. Okay, here's the thing. Here's, here's the type that all, all men have kind of the same time. They're looking for pretty women. It's like your looks matter a lot to men. And it's, and it's shallow to say that. I know. I hear what you're saying. Um, but literally, it's 95% of it at first, really. Um, and then after that, very quickly after that, then more personality. And then, and then after that, it is like, do you bring them peace or whatever? Because I'm telling you, I've been with some pretty girls, but they just just frustrate the shit out of you. All they want to do is argue, combat with you every day. Let me tell you, just like I mentioned, the successful guys, like to be successful takes so much, takes so much energy, takes so much thought, takes so much work and effort. Um, and then la and it's, it's always something bad happens all the time. You're always having to solve problems all the time. And in order to just live that way, all right, you gotta live that way. Then to have some woman at home just causing you arguments, God, just arguments nonstop. Yeah, no. So then, so it's pretty first, very first, that's the very first thing, well, it's at least an ace now. That's the very first thing. But then, um, after pretty, you gotta be peaceful, you gotta be calm, you gotta be, you gotta be the man's peace. But you gotta be pretty. So the rich man's type, because I feel like they, they especially men that have, worked for themselves and made something of themselves, um, they're going to want to feel like all that work was for something, and it typically means being very pretty. Pretty peaceful, calm. Yeah, that's right. I literally think if you're just pretty, stay pretty, you gotta stay on your shape, stay, stay pretty, and then just simply be nice, like all the time, no matter what, like your man will like fucking, he will not only keep you, but he'll take care of you forever. Find yourself as, be pretty, and then just be all the time nice. Don't get angry. Don't be argumentative, don't be combative. Just be nice and pleasant, always, despite how challenging it might be sometimes. And you will find, and a, a good man that's successful, because it take, you have to be, you, you have to have these characteristics to be successful. That man will hold and keep and take care of you forever. <laughs> he really will, he really will. I love Jared Leto, okay. Oh, I saw, no, I saw Jay Leto. He drove beside me in my car. How can you not get argumentative? Well, you don't need to argue. Why do you need to argue with a man at all? If your man, here's the thing. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. The woman said, she said, she said, she asked. Sorry, I don't know who answered that. Hold on. Who said that? Deborah says, how do you not get argumentative? Here's the thing, Deborah. If you have a man who's paying for your life and bills, or could, what do you, what do you have to argue about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If a man is paying for your life and your bills, what do you have to argue with him about? What are y'all arguing? What could you be arguing about? Some of y'all find a way. <laughs> Some of y'all find a way to be unnecessarily combative, have unnecessary fights and arguments. To, you know, just it's, I guess it's exciting for you, whatever. But I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> the man that's about it, that's working his ass off. I'm telling you, he is not trying to have that shit at home. I promise you.
Yeah, yeah, you say that, Jenny, but the thing is, is even if you are paying a girl's bills, I this is this has happened to me. I I was dating a girl that for I want to say like a year and a half I was paying her rent for sure, and then some. And for real, this girl would still find ways to argue with me about the dumbest shit. Just texting me arguments all the time. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm mean, like getting trapped, getting sucked into a fight or something about really small, nonsensical stuff. And I just could not understand why. It was and it'd be like about stupid, like small things, like almost nothing things that aren't even worth, it's not like a, I, I, uh, there was some major transgression and we needed to talk about it. No, it was always just some combative bullshit over what's your favorite color or where, you know, just stuff like that. It was like, what the fuck? I don't know, I can't, I can't take it. I'm patient, guys, but I'm not patient enough to deal with a combative woman. That's crazy. That's so needless to say, I ain't paying her shit at all anymore. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Three dates in, how do I make the money conversation go from there? I don't understand what you're asking me. Uh, men find me boring because I don't argue. I pick my battles. I don't think so. I don't, I, a man, a, a, a good man that was busy in his life isn't gonna just like go home and be like, you know what I wish you would do more of? You, you, know, you, know, what I, you know what I would need more of you at home, Bubbles, is I just wish you argued with me more. I, I, I'm gonna come home from a hard day arguing with men all day, dealing with bullshit nonstop. And all I want from you, Bubbles, is when I come home, I just want some woman at home to just argue with me. I, I promise no men, no man says that. <laughs> Are you married? No. I've never had a man pay for more than our dates when when or how does that transition into paying for my bills, etc.? Okay, so here's the answer, guys. Is it's for most people, it's not going to. For most of you girls, there's if you're already like coming to that relationship with your with your job and your income and your house and your apartment you're paying with a boyfriend or I'm sorry, with your roommates or like whatever, and you start dating a guy or whatever, he's not now gonna just offer up to pay for you unless he's very successful. That's, that's it, because in America, guys, that shit costs money. It's very expensive to pay for a girl's bills um, in America. And then not just that, but like, there's a lot you give up for that. And here's, and then another thing is, is this double-edged sword, just so you guys know. Here's another thing you guys don't understand. I'm gonna answer your question, but I just need you guys to know this. For most of y'all, it's hella dangerous for you to quit your job and then just let some man provide for you, especially a homegirl over here asking me, on TikTok's asking me, um, how, we just, we're on three dates in, how do I get a man to start paying my bills? Here's the problem, guys. If a man is, starts blessing you with money in, in such a way that it pays for your bills, all right, one month, two months, whatever, your level of effort in life, your work effort will go down. And if you're not a nine to five person, you're more like kind of freelance, you kind of get your money how you do it, whatever. Um, and, you, and a man that you're dating starts blessing you with money, not like a steady check, but just blessings like that, and y'all using it for your bills, then you, very quickly you're gonna start to rely on that man, all right? And you're three dates in, you're like, all right, well, I'm trying to get my phone bill paid. The problem is with that kind of thing is then m the next month is always coming, and it's always coming faster than you think. And then the more that that guy gives to you for you to pay your bills, the more you're gonna be hella, hella, hella dependent on him. And if it's like three months in, let me tell you something. Y'all don't even know a person in three months. Y'all don't know a person in a year, all right? So if this guy's paying your bills or worse than that, you have a legitimate job at a legitimate place that you've been there for five years and is doing good for you. And then some guy that you met in a year says, here you go, boo-boo, I'm gonna pay your bills. 
quit your job, whatever, you should consider that with great care because if, if you quit your job, you are now dependent on that man. And what if he's a fucking psychopath? What if he's not what you thought he was and then you just threw away a good job and just, now you can't get a new job? You see, you can't, you, 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 you're now dependent solely on his temperament towards you. And that's just not a safe bet for most women. All right? It is, when I say a man should be providing for his woman, you, I'm talking about a person that he's been seeing for five years. I'm talking about his wife. I am not talking about some girl you started dating six months ago. Because that's fucking scary if you're a woman that has been living a certain way up to now and then you meet a man and then, oh, what a relief. Thank God he gives me money. But then you start using that money to your bills and then guess what? Y'all get in one fight and he rips it away as some sort of punishment. Now you're fucking scrambling, calling your parents or worse. And that's just not, that's just not a place that you need to be in as a woman. You should, if you have a job as a woman and you start dating a guy, you should never quit your job till y'all are close to married, dead ass. And, it, and only if he's rich as fuck. Because you never know, one month can be bad for him and now you're fucked. Do you guys understand? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? It's just, as a woman, you gotta take care of yourself always. Because men will just replace you with the cute waitress and then now what? You're just fucked now? Like, it, it's not, unless y'all married, unless it's, it's y'all get, it's pen on paper marriage or something close to that, it is not practical, or it's not, I'm sorry, it's not prudent for you to be quitting your job three dates in. That's foolish, reckless. What did I miss? You're missing it all, sis. Happening right now. <laughs> the action's right now. <laughs> that goes against feminine wisdom. No, it doesn't. What I just said is real wisdom. I, I, you don't call it masculine, feminine, feminine, whatever. If you got a way to make money and you start dating a man and y'all three dates in and he starts paying your rent, I would not quit your job. You should proceed with caution, ma'am. Because otherwise, that guy who's clearly fucking something's wrong with him, where he's like, hey, I'm going to bestow you a fuck ton of money on our fourth date. Uh, he can take it away from you just like that. And then if that's the case, now you're left high and dry because you quit your job for this. That's really fucking dumb. You should just instead, you should instead... Once there's a serious investment on his part and yours, and it's been a few years in, and he wants to, you know, quit, uh, you quit your job because y'all travel. He needs you because he's traveling more or whatever. Then fine, but until that time, quit your job from when, when because of some man you met in one in, in less than one years one years time. That's really foolish. <laughs> it's just fucking dumb. I can never unless the ring was ringing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If he put a ring on it, yeah, by all means. But until that time, it, it's very reckless to just give it all up and hope that he's just going to like you still in four months. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Ain't no way. That's right. You got lean. Ah, uh, I don't know. I've always been kind of thin. I, I did kind of, I was kind of getting puffy a little bit there for a minute. <laughs> uh, what about if he's rich, but his circle isn't? Well, here's the thing. A lot of guys that are making money, everybody that I know that's making money is, is busy making money. Even my friends, I rarely see my friends anymore. Like, and I, and I still consider these guys good friends. I'm like once a year, you know, but they're doing their shit. I'm doing my shit. There's some mutual respect there. We can pick up the phone and talk like it's nothing, but we'll go a year or two or seven <laughs> without even talking and then just immediately pick back up where we left off. So, I mean, if a guy claims he's rich and he's hanging out every weekend with a bunch of bums, he ain't rich. He's faking it. He's fake rich to you. He's, he allows you to think he's successful, but he's faking it. How do I get him to commit? He spoils me and he is rich. You gotta cut him off, sis. The answer is 
um, you become strong. Like say, look, I can. I realize that this relationship isn't going anywhere, and you need to take a. You need to take a strong and long step back and become hugely less available, and then tell them it's because I can see that this relationship isn't going anywhere. You're not serious about me. You used to do like that. And watch that man cry his eyeballs out. Just show up at your window with a boombox, flowers like this. <laughs> I promise you. Uh, hello, guys. Yeah, once you pull it away from him, that's your, your little outlet. He's not going to get rid of that. <laughs> uh, you got to leave on a high note, though. Don't be, don't stamp out. Don't be y'all getting an argument and y'all stand and you stamp away. No, no, no. You, you got to leave on a high note. You ever heard the expression um, "always leave them wanting more"? It's got to be like that. You had a great night, and then it's just like poof, gone. And then tell him what I just said, and he'll show up with a ring. I love receiving the money I don't want to leave. I know, see? Now, now, so you don't have him, Sophie, he's got you. See what I mean? So he's, he, he, because he's giving you the money, he's managing his risk. And because you're taking the money, you're not managing yours at all. So he's in control. And he's always gonna be in control. And maybe it's fine. But you asked me and I told you. Russell looking at his TikTok comments more than IG. Sorry, it's hard. There's multiple screens here. <laughs> how tall are you? I'm 6'1". Uh, how, to con how do you continue a conversation out of the elevator at work? I don't know what you mean. You're in the elevator. You all go down the elevator together. And then you part ways. I don't know. Otherwise, walk. Oh, I thought I parked this way. And you all walk the same way. There you go. Yes, we give us love. I am giving you love. I'm trying to. Do you like redheads? I like redheads. I love redheads sometimes. Depends. Uh, this is counterproductive to what a relationship is. This is all manipula manipulation that you're speaking. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, you don't seem like that trick would work on you. Which trick? Uh, hey, Mr. Russell, who do you learn about dating from any mentors for a coach? No, just growing up life experience. Uh, let's see here. April, what's up April? What is your type? I like pretty. I like, I like shake the room pretty. When, uh, when I, if I'm there and then my like date, my woman comes in like to meet me or something like that, or if we're, if we're not, if, I, if we're not going together, it's a people go like this. Oh shit, what is that? I like that. Like crazy, crazy beautiful. I like that. I don't know. I, 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 I like, and I also like women that are, um, have nice taste. That's a really hard thing to find. There are so many girls that think they have nice taste. You have no idea in LA, you have no idea how many girls just rocked the clean girl aesthetic or whatever, and they think that that equals that they have nice taste in things or know what is good and looks good. Wrong. That's just the imitation game. There's a big difference between, you know, putting on a monochromatic outfit and a tight ponytail and actually having nice taste. Those are two different things. And uh, that's extremely rare to find. And teeth are important. Yeah, gotta have teeth. What if, what if a person is um, blunt by nature, just like strongly opinionated, I'm gonna paraphrase what you said. Uh, I don't, I like strong opinions as long as it doesn't come across as hostile. I don't, I don't, I like, I, if a girl's got a strong opinion about things, that's fine. I, I hear that. I like that. But if you're combative at me, especially for no reason, I, I can't take it. I cannot suffer that. 
Uh, I would never in a million years. I'd rather you have fewer opinions and be sweet than have lots of opinions and combative about it by a mile. Good night. <sighs> Back it with fact. Backs it with facts. High quality taste is what it, is what he means. Yes. Do you, do you like intelligent women? Yeah, of course. Guys, unintelligent women, even if they're pretty to look at, fine, I'll keep them around. <laughs> but just if I've met girls that are very pretty with that, with low IQs or the personality of a wet paper towel, and I'm just like, God, okay, it's fine, at least you're pretty. <laughs> but I can't, not for long. How do you feel about extroverted women? That's cool. Extroverted women is cool as long. See, here's the thing. Extroverted women can be fine. As long as they're not like out there hoeing. Extroverted women oftentimes are hoeing and their snap scores like over a hundred thousand or whatever. And it's just like, God, how many people are on your close friends list? Like that's what extroverted oftentimes means. And that's, I don't need, I don't need that. God, I don't need that in my life. That's too much drama. But extroverted in a, in a respectful way, fine. <laughs> yeah, beautiful skin. Thank you. You can't have it though. You can't have it though, but thank you. Uh, and Andy, or I'm sorry, Addy. I admire and respect you. Thank you. That's a nice compliment. Where are we? Okay, sorry guys, I was trying to catch up with the chat here. Okay. I have a snap, honestly, I don't care. See? I'd see, that's only, it's kind of a, if you're an adult woman with a Snapchat, it's kind of a red flag. That's, a Snapchat is for ho and you can't convince me otherwise. I don't care what updates they make to the app. If y'all have anything that's vanishing, y'all both hoeing. If y'all have a snap score at all, hoeing. Text like an adult. If it has to disappear, y'all hoeing. Ain't no way you're not. Ain't no way you're gonna convince me you're not either. Oh, it's just easier. No, it isn't. It's literally the same. You can just phone number, text, blah, 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 same way, blah, blah, same numbers, blue, white text, blah, blah, blah. or green for some of y'all. Ugh. But still, if it has to vanish, y'all ho it. Y'all ain't gonna trick me. <laughs> we want to see the ring. Oh, it's just a. This isn't a. This is just a. Signet ring. It's not a wedding ring or anything. It's my right hand. I'm in America. It's my right hand. This is just. This was a gift, actually, for making somebody a lot of money. Me too, but it's more like a constellation. It's more like a celebration gift. <clears throat> Uh, is a woman with no social media a red flag? Are you kidding me? A woman with no s social media is a green flag. I, I couldn't even imagine the attention span of a woman without social media. She'd be like laser focused. That woman would lock in every day. She'd be so into you. <laughs> without social media. Because social media gives you ch toddler brain or worse. You just, just keep you, 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 just dopamine, 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 vape, vape, dopamine, dopamine, vape, vape. Could you imagine a person without social media with no, no, and no nicotine habit? It'd be like talking to the Dalai Lama, just extreme focus. She 
could help you fucking reach nirvana. For sure. For sure she could. I believe that. But it's not the case. And you know how I know? Because all y'all here right now on your social media. <laughs> so. It is what it is, guys. It's the world we live in now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Julia says, okay, I'm out because I'm vaping on social media. Called it! Julia's a red flag walking around with her monochromatic outfit and her slick back ponytail and her social media and her vape pen. Just <sighs> pretending she's better than everyone else. That's Julia in a nutshell. <laughs> Julia Louise, number one. Good night. Is that a wedding ring? No. <laughs> How long does it take you to like someone? Me? Uh, a while. I, I think it's both ways. I think that I tend to rub people the wrong way at first. Depends on how you meet me. I think I rub people the wrong way at first. I can be a bit intimidating, I think, in person. And then I always grow on people like a fungus. And grow on you. And where... And where, uh... You're like... Mm, I'm not sure about that guy at first. You end up like, wow, this dude is really actually super dope. And I'll grow on you. That's how it works for me, typically. Wait, hang on. Uh, you have kind of grown on me. See? See what I'm saying? Told you. <laughs> I think that if you just give it a chance, let it marinate, give me, give me like a, a good month or two, you'll be hooked. How do you get them to open up? Why would you want them to? God! You really want to hear men's problems? Oh, that's exhausting. That's exhausting for me. I hear men's problems all day. And it's exhausting to me. Do you really want that? It, you know, you think you want to yap with a man until he starts telling you some real shit. And you're like, ooh, reel this back. It's too, it's too, this is too much. Too serious. You, too, you look too stressed. I just, you know, let's go back the way it was. Y'all really want that? I don't think you do. <laughs> and here's the thing about men too, especially men that are about it. They're accustomed to that. They're accustomed to not venting about their problems to you as a woman or anybody. They have to just deal with their problems. They have to solve their problems like a man. And that's a whole thing for them. They'll take their problems, throughout their life and just solve them on their own, whichever way they know how, and they won't have to complain about them. If you, if you go down that road, sis, you're gonna wish you hadn't. You're gonna be like, oh, well, okay, let's just, you're, you're gonna, and then you're gonna feel so bad, and you feel so guilty, and you're gonna be trying to be helpful, but you can't really be, because it's a man's problem, and he has to solve it himself, and it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be nothing but more stress for you. Do you really want that dynamic? Do you really, really want that? How tall are you? I'm 6'1". So it's just Bible study. <laughs> you should have Bible study. But life can just be easier. You know, you guys don't have to deal with a man's problems all the time. Do you ever want to get married and have the whole shebang? Yes, actually, I do. 
not haven't quite worked out worked that out yet, but <laughs> I'm doing all right, folks. Don't don't worry about little old me. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, is it's not super helpful for men to vent to people about their problems, especially people that can't really help them. They just want to be empathetic for him. Um, so men just don't want to waste their time on that. Plus. They don't really necessarily want their woman to feel like see them in that light, like they're dealing with a problem they can't solve. Um, not to say that that doesn't happen, it does, but typically men will just keep that to themselves. You don't necessarily need to get involved or should, you shouldn't really want to get involved. Let them solve their own problems. If they wanted you to know, if they wanted you to know, he'd tell you. <laughs> Were you popular in high school? Well, I don't know. I was, I was, I was like, I moved around a lot as a kid, so I was kind of like introduced to the to the gang late at a small high school. When it was high school in a one horse town, I was a bit of a chameleon. I could kind of be in all the groups, so to speak. I wouldn't say I was particularly popular, but I, but I was definitely people who knew who I was. Um, but then again, I had a graduating class of like two hundred and forty people or some shit, so people knew everybody. <laughs> There's only a few of us. Okay, they want to say hi, Max. Come on, come on. Come here. Ugh, here we go. Here we go, guys. The second best dressed man in Hollywood. He's got a little tie on. That's natural. He didn't have to do that. He wakes up that way. Ha ha ha! It's my boy. It's my handsome baby. He's so handsome. Who are? They're talking about you. You care? You can't read. You can't read, it's not real, huh? <laughs> That's true. Who are you sleeping? You look sleepy. You got some sleepies. I got a little teepee. I got a little teepee bed in my bedroom. It's literally a, it's literally a dog teepee. <laughs> it's so fucking cute. Uh, let's see here. What if he has a close friend that's a girl and they share a dog? Is that a red flag? Sophia, what the fuck? What are you talking about? As soon as I read that, I immediately, the, the, your text was glowing red in my eyes. What do you mean? As a, duh. He's got a close friend who he shares a dog with? Does he also have a close friend who he shares a child with? Do so you have a baby mama out there that are, they, he says there's just friends? What are you talking about? Does he get jo is there joint custody for the dog? What do you what do you mean? Did you not feel how hot that was on your thumbs when you were typing out that sentence? That was fucking red hot. What do you mean? He's got a close friend he shares a dog with. What? Why? What are you talking about? You can't tell me that those people don't have frequent and often Bible study together. You can't convince me. You'll never convince me that they're not Bible studying every Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes Sundays. A close friend he has a, a dog with? Jeez Louise. Some of y'all just don't want to know. You're asking me, and that's like your subconscious coming out. But y'all are y'all are blind as a bat on purpose in your relationships or whatever the fuck is going on with you, Sophie. You're just pretending at this point. I know you saw it. I know you seen it. And now you're telling me that you're you're asking me as if you don't already know. Unless you're, unless you're, you know, I don't, and I don't know anything about you, Sophie, but unless you got a crooked eye, there's no way you are not seeing that shit. It's right in front of your face. Jesus Christ, close friend he shares a dog with. What do you mean? <laughs> God, it's like right in your face, and you're just like this. Sophie's like this. And it's just going bing, 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 bing. Right in Sophie's face, she's just like, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm. 
Let me go ask Russell. <laughs> that's some Freudian shit, Sophie. That's just, that's burn, that is eating you up inside and it's coming out on my live right here, piping hot tea for us all to see. That's coming, that's fresh off the pot, fresh out the pot, hot off the stove. That's just burning you up. Cause you're, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> that's Sophie. <laughs> Yes, that's a red flag. What do you mean? You better get that dog from that woman. You better go fight. You better go to, you better go to take that woman to court. You're going to have to be in those custody battles with your mans because that is, that is his child he's sharing custody with. And you're going to have to stand beside him at the, in the courthouse. Go support your mans. Otherwise, they're having Bible study outside, outside, outside of y'all's relationship. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh man. Shady business. That's right. Okay guys, listen, that's it. That's it for my live today. It's been about an hour. Thank you guys for joining me. We'll be on again soon. Oh, I'm starting to do subscriber only lives now. So people that are subscribed to my channel, click the little star at the bottom. Uh, if you're on my subscriber channels, I start doing the how to's. How to meet the, how to meet the right guys, how to meet the right girls. If you're the guys on there, we do both. Um, it's more, this more is sort of a free form advice. Whereas my subscriber stuff is going to be more how to plus a little bit of perks and benefits. Really cool stuff. Check it out. Plus you get a little badge by your name. Um, click that, subscribe, and I'll see you in my subscriber live. And the rest of you, I'll see you next time. Thanks everybody for joining me. It's been a great live. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.